Today we discuss some important elements from Florence Scoville Shin's book, The Game of Life and How to Play It. I created this mind map here and I call it Three Keys to Prosperity. Three elements that I was able to reflect upon from the book as I was reading it yesterday, which I'd like to discuss with you to further instill ideas, inspiration in relationship to prosperity. Now, when we think about prosperity, it's important to reflect that each person has an individualized interpretation of what prosperity is for them. It's important to find what prosperity means to us and realize that we are meant to receive and live in prosperity. I believe it's our default state. On the journey, we can learn things that aren't necessarily true in relation to prosperity, in relation to ourselves, and correlated over to prosperity, that seem to bring forth a sense of inner resistance, or as she states here, state of torment. When we identify what these interpretations are within ourselves in relation to prosperity and change it, one of the things that happens is insights and perspectives begin to flow on how to reveal our prosperity, which is one of our first key points to prosperity. Resistance is hell, for it places a man in a state of torment. As she states, this inner resistance is creating this inner torment. We are tormenting ourselves within as a result of these interpretations. Now, as we go down this self-realization journey, we'll notice that we're able to bring forth our results, our prosperity, in the most interesting and unconventional ways. Oftentimes, when I reflect back on this understanding, I'm reminded of the quote from Steve Jobs' commencement speech in which he refers to connecting the dots looking backwards. We always say this, hindsight is twenty twenty. And he also states that you got to follow your heart and intuition for they somehow already know what you are meant to become. And she articulates it really well in this particular story that she gives. She says, a metaphysician once gave me a wonderful recipe for taking every trick in the game of life. It is the acme of non-resistance. He gave it in this way. At one time in my life, I baptized children, and of course, they had many names. Now I no longer baptize children. I baptize events, but I give every event the same name. If I have a failure, I baptize it as success. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now this process is very interesting because we've been talking about this. We call this transmutation turning what may be perceived, and the key word is perceived as an obstacle, and turning it into some kind of opportunity. Now, this requires conscious practice as we go through on the journey to inventory the things that we have each day that we are identifying a meaning to whatever it is from a place of obstacle in which we associate an internal meaning of resistance to it. One might believe that the obstacle holds them back. But as we bring ourselves to a deep presence, as we release the interpretation, by bringing us to our default state of pure awareness, we realize that we were assigning the meaning to it. And then what happens is it changes in some shape or form. When a person has a conversation with another person and the other person says something in which it evokes a certain emotional reaction of anger, let's say, in the leader. And if the leader identifies with this, they begin to respond from a place of reactivity, creating unnecessary conflict. The same is to be said about 
anything that shows up on the journey to bringing forth prosperity. Actually, practicing sound leadership is a form of revealing prosperity. Leadership is the ability to look at a circumstance and see it for how it really is, which is in relationship to your vision. If prosperity is our default state, if pure awareness is our default state, which, by the way, represents love, then what creates the resistance is our inner interpretation. And as we've been discussing the concepts from mental alchemy, the key is transmutation, removing ourselves from this state of torment and bringing us into a state of acceptance or allowing, which then releases this inner resistance. As she states, in this we see the great law of transmutation, founded on non-resistance. Through his spoken word, every failure was transmuted into success. So let's reflect upon it a little deeper. Founded on non-resistance. So the key to transmutation is the foundation of non-resistance. It is in the moment, detaching from the experience of reactivity realizing that we are providing meaning from within ourselves over to the experience or the circumstance or the person or the event. And by releasing from that reactivity, we no longer go down the thread of thinking that is related to that meaning from within, thus sending us down a different life track and creating unnecessary complexity in our lives. Now, this requires practice, of course. That's why it's important to work with this information on a regular basis, to reflect each day on the different experiences you're having and asking yourself, uh, perhaps at the end of the day, where was I resistant to the prosperity in which I am? You are that prosperity. It is the default state. Where am I resistant to it? It is revealed through the reactivity Reactivity is essentially replaying interpretations from the past that are buried within the subconscious, thus giving us optimization data or insight of what we can do about it. And when in doubt, it is stated to do the loving thing, is to release from that interpretation and go back to pure awareness. And right away, the resistance is excluded out of consciousness. As she states, Man can only get the right idea of non-resistance through spiritual understanding. My students have often said, I don't want to be a doormat. I reply, when you use non-resistance with wisdom, no one will ever be able to walk over you. So we've been discussing this. We say, wisdom is knowing the difference. We also say, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. To understand these concepts in the mind is a form of knowledge. To live it through practice is experience. And through the practice and the experience gained, we're able to reflect back on, and which is why I always like to go back to certain books and read them again, because through experience we change. Our mind is rearranged as a result of the experience. And then going back to the same material, we see something and we understand it from a different perspective that we didn't see it before from or we didn't understand it before from. And the process repeats. We also call this resourcefulness. A lot of times you can take one personal development book, such as The Game of Life and How to Play It or Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And you could practice and study the principles in there till you produce your vision, whatever your definite chief aim is. And then go back to the book and it seems like you're reading another book when in actuality what you're doing is you have awakened a part of you that understands even more. We call this increasing our awareness. And then what we see is something that is what we call a deeper wisdom, a deeper way of applying the information. 
I often reflect upon this when I and some sort are talking about prosperity. Study the work of Jay Abraham. And one of the things he mentions is three ways to grow your business. Get more leads. Convert them over to clients. Number two, increase the transactional value. Point of sale purchase price. And number three, work it out so they come back and buy again from you. Ongoing business, or we call this lifetime client value. Through working with the information, I realized that there was many ways of generating clients, many ways of converting leads into clients, many ways of increasing the transactional value through bundling and all the other things that we talked about to a certain level in the discussion, the three-hour discussion we had on J. Abraham's book, Mr. X. I'll put a link in the description to that. And then there are infinity ways of orchestrating ongoing business with a client through referrals, through doing events with the clients and thus offering other products and services, partnership deals in which you create products and services with partners and offer it to your client base. There are many ways of doing it, but the realization is found through the practice. Now, this is all revealed in a state of mind. The first understanding we have to have and we want to further encourage is the obstacle is an opportunity to practice transmutation, to be able to see it differently. And if we have a challenge seeing it different, go back to the default state of pure awareness. Release from any identification, any meaning. And then from there, you will receive the meaning within. She also speaks of, and this is point number two, having faith in your spoken word. And she states, one of the greatest messages given to the race through the scripture is that God is man's supply and that man can release through his spoken word all that belongs to him by divine right. He must, however, have perfect faith in his spoken word. See, faith transcends beliefs. It transcends interpretations. Faith is in harmony with pure awareness. It's something that is subconsciously realized, how she says it here. When man knows his own powers and the workings of his mind, his great desire is to find an easy and quick way to impress the subconscious with good, for simply an intellectual knowledge of the truth will not bring results. In relation to prosperity, many of us have had interpretations instilled within us when we were at a younger age in regards to prosperity. We might not have felt that we were worth the prosperity that we desired. A person begins to form a way of life based on these limiting interpretations regarding prosperity. And thus, as a result, they feel like they are losing themselves. They don't know themselves anymore. When one of the foundations of all the spiritual stuff that we've been discussing is know thyself. Now, this knowing thyself is something that we realize by working with the subconscious mind because what we are interpreting, most of it is underneath our conscious awareness. A lot of it actually goes beyond the logic, which is why we say follow the heart and intuition. They somehow know what you already want to become. Because when you look back on the journey, certainly when I look back at the business journey, and I've spoken to other entrepreneurs on their business journey, creating prosperity in their life, the way that they brought forth the prosperity was not in a way that they consciously knew. They may have had a plan or even a formal business plan. Many had no plan. But all they knew is that they were going to bring it forth. They were working with faith allowing the subconscious to express. So when she states, the subconscious is often impressed through music. Music has a fourth dimensional quality and releases the soul from imprisonment. It makes wonderful things seem impossible and easy of accomplishment. I reflect back on 
how we get this information in our mind in the first place. A lot of us get this information of who we are based on what we were taught by others or certain experiences in our life in which our subconscious was a lot more receptive. In certain traditions, when it comes to working with the subconscious, they work with music and dance. And what I found is this is actually stimulating a certain state of mind, which brings us into allowing and receiving and impressing, working with the subconscious. This is related to the theta brainwave frequency. Theta, being a certain frequency, is the frequency that we are going into when we are more suggestible. Neville Goddard refers to this as state akin to sleep. So music or certain kinds of creative expression allows us to work with the subconscious at a very deep level. I've spoken with some artists who get into this theta state of mind and will express on their art expression, be it a dance or a art, a painting. And what they'll notice is that whatever is expressed on that painting further inspires them. And one painting or one physical expression in dance changes their life such as the case with music, which is why I suggest, if you're a student of my subconscious mind program, when working with audio affirmations, to play some light music in the background that stimulates this theta state. Theta activity is classed as slow activity. It is seen in connection with creativity, intuition, daydreaming, and fantasizing and is a repository for memories, emotions, sensations as well. Theta waves are strong during internal focus, meditation, prayer, and spiritual awareness. So by releasing from the reactivity or releasing from the internal resistance, we ultimately slip into this theta state of mind and thus receive creative inspiration or ideas of how to transmute the obstacle into an opportunity. It reflects a state between wakefulness and sleep and relates to the subconscious mind. It is usually abnormal in awake adults, but it is perfectly normal in children up to 13 years old, which is why we're very suggestible at that time. So this state akin to sleep, we want to access it so that we can work with the subconscious and thus work with the spoken word via affirmation or self-talk. We want to communicate in a way that speaks to the subconscious. And as a result of speaking to the subconscious, the change occurs. The way to speak to the subconscious is faith in your spoken word. Now, one of the things that I have been encouraging all throughout these videos is related to the inner voice. And from my own experience, I find this, this inner voice becomes even more profound during certain experiences in our life. And yes, it could be music, but it can also be in nature in which we find ourselves experiencing theta. It is during these times where we seem to have a deep connection with the people around us, with nature, with ourselves. And through this process, we actually build a relationship with ourselves to find nonlinear ways to bring forth our prosperity. So again, this faith in our spoken word is encouraged by releasing ourselves from excessive amount of overthinking, which seems to cloud our ability to connect to the infinite source of wisdom that is within us. Napoleon Hill calls this infinite intelligence. So our spoken word is stimulated by release from the state of torment, 
detaching from the reactivity. And then an internal dialogue, which is distinct from the mental chatter, is brought to the surface. I find that every now and then when I exercise, I slip into this theta state very lightly. And what I notice is then I have these, what we would call mystical experiences. What happened with me is it felt like a child version of me actually flew out of my own mind and sat in front of me. And this child seemed kind of afraid. So I turned to him, which is me, and I said, you don't need to be afraid. I am you. And then what I noticed is that the child went back inside of my own mind. And then right then and there, I felt this deep sense of relief, like a deep peace was made within me in relation to my past. Now, these kinds of experiences, what I found, increase as a result of releasing from certain interpretations that we have that prosperity is not for us. And the way I relate this to my experience is that a lot of the interpretations that we have when we were children, as stated here, that children tend to be in this state of theta in which they're very receptive, and they learn things from their environment. And we tend to identify with those beliefs subconsciously and play it out in later stages of our life. There's a certain point where that part of you wants to heal itself. Now, there's a book called The Power of Full Engagement. And I pulled this quote and I'm weaving it into our discussion to emphasize this. To be fully engaged, we must be physically energized emotionally connected, mentally focused, and spiritually aligned with a purpose beyond our immediate self-interest. When I reflected upon this, I realized that when I'm physically engaged in my day-to-day -day experience, when I'm emotionally connected and I'm not running away from things physically or emotionally, while I'm lightheartedly mentally focused what I notice is that I'm in deep engagement. And I can slip into these theta states where I have these experiences. Doesn't necessarily happen all the time. It happens as needed so that these theaters, as the experience that I shared of mine, played out to further remove that inner resistance. Because there was a part of me that did not accept who I was. Perhaps the child version of me had gone through an experience, and I didn't know what it was, in which he felt afraid. But knowing that who I have become and who I am now provided him a sense of comfort. I also believe that this is very much related to a lot of the revisional work, and I'm discussing this from the perspective of prosperity because I realize that, as we've been discussing, that our ability to remain faithful in our spoken word and the ability to remove ourselves from these states of torment that she talks about is in relationship to making peace with attributes in ourself. And if for whatever the reason you had certain experiences in which you felt at that time that prosperity wasn't yours and you were, as a result of it, going through life fearing having the prosperity, which, by the way, plays out in a person for example, in the entrepreneurial space, as we gave the example of the J. Abraham's three ways to grow your business, a person might be afraid to reach out to new prospects. They might be afraid to ask for the business and thus convert over to clients. They might be afraid to ask for money at the point of purchase. They might be afraid to go deep with the client and understand what their pains, needs, desires, and frustrations are so they can create more products and services and thus have an ongoing relationship with the client. And these revelations through the fear are buried within the subconscious. So in order to have faith in the spoken word, to be able to work with the subconscious, we want to identify what these interpretations are. And here's what I found. They tend to reveal themselves on the journey because all I did was commit to the journey and there's certain things that I know I have to do. 
the exercise, the business deals, the personal development. And as these things happen, things are brought to the surface, which is actually related to the third point. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. How much have we sowed that is buried within us that we want to release from? such as the example of making peace with attributes from our past. Well, they're brought to the surface. They're brought to the surface through reactivity. They're also brought to the surface when we are deeply engaged in what we are doing, deeply engaged in the day-to-day. Things show up, and we make peace with them, which is why I always recommend picking a goal, creating a vision, and staying committed all the way till you bring it forth. Because you'll bring it forth and you'll realize yourself even more. And you will remove yourself from this inner resistance through making peace with these attributes from your past, such as the example that I gave. Thus, you won't find yourself as much in this state of torment. And as a result... If opportunities show up that seem to be disguised as obstacles, it'll be easier for you to recognize them for what they really are, which are opportunities. And you'll be able to some way, somehow convert those over to the result. We remember that our spoken word, what we think about and what we believe to be true in relation to prosperity is expressing itself some way, somehow, through the theater of life experiences. And what we soweth in our mind, we shall reap. And our default state is prosperity. So what we do is we remove those attributes, we make peace with those attributes within ourselves to remove that limiting thinking regarding the prosperity that we are. And we recognize what these interpretations are based on the resistance that we have and the Resistance that we have is placing us in this state of torment, as she states here. Resistance is hell, for it places man in a state of torment. So let's conclude this with an affirmation to further instill this discussion. You can say, I realize that prosperity is my default state. I am prosperity. More so each day, I reveal my prosperity, and thus I have faith in my vision. I also recognize If resistance were to show up, I'm able to identify by releasing from it, bringing myself back into the state of pure awareness. From there, I receive the accurate interpretation. And from there, I'm able to transmute obstacles into what they are, which are opportunities. As I continue this journey, it becomes automatic. I then recognize that what I sow in my mind, I shall reap. And what I was destined to reap is the prosperity that I am. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.